Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I'm going to show you guys how you can change your location using a VPN. Now there are many reasons why you might want to use a VPN to change your location and not any other tool. And that's because a VPN is going to be able to give you that ability to stream specific services that you don't have access to. So if we're talking about streaming platforms like different Amazon Prime video libraries or different Hulu or Netflix or Disney libraries, you'll be able to access them using a reliable VPN. Now, another reason to change your IP address is to stay private. So uh, if you don't want your government, ISP, or anybody else to know what you're doing online, using a VPN is typically one of the best choices to do that. Another reason is to get access to services that you don't have access to. It could be an online market, it could be just a specific website, or it could be your bank account. So if you're abroad, you probably don't want to log into your bank account using a foreign IP address. So basically what you want to do is connect to a local server using a VPN, and you should be able to access your bank account without any trouble. Okay, so let's just go ahead and demonstrate how this works. As you can tell, it says on my IP finder here that I'm in New York because I'm connected to the New York server with ExpressVPN. I'll talk about these VPNs, by the way, in just a little bit. Uh, but if you're interested in any of these VPNs, or if you want to go straight to the reviews or pricing or discounts, you'll find everything you need in the description down below. So the way this works is once you install or download any of these VPNs, you'll have the interface here. And it's as simple as, you know, let's say you're on Nord, you can just go through the map or bring up the list on Surfshark also and just select one. Or if you like to use ExpressVPN because, well, it's basically the easiest to use. Let's just go to Canada and connect to Toronto. I can click and then turn on the on and off button here and just click it. Or I could just double click the server and that's basically it. So to double check that you are indeed connected, uh, to a different location, you can check any IP finder and it'll say that you're there if the VPN is indeed properly on and it is working and functioning. So that's basically it. So now as a result of connecting to the Canadian server, I have access to the Canadian Netflix library, Canadian Amazon Prime, or any other Canada exclusive service or website, I can access it knowing that my data will still be protected by the VPN that I'm using here because essentially that's what a VPN does. A VPN will route your connection through a secure server that is owned by the VPN provider. So you're basically paying a fee to rent a little bit of space from that server so that you can get access to all kinds of content uh, from all over the world. Now, to keep it as brief as possible, I would say ExpressVPN is your go-to if you're looking for a very reliable and consistent VPN that's incredibly easy to use. And you do have over 3,000 servers in 105 countries. So 105 countries is going to be the biggest number of countries, arguably, in all of the VPN industry. 105 is a lot. And so if that's something you're looking for because you're looking to you know, access all kinds of content and also just use a very reliable and consistent and VPN when it comes to streaming and torrenting uh, and it arguably has the best privacy policy so when it comes to using you know a VPN for crypto also or for banking or for any kind of sensitive information involving financial information I use ExpressVPN but this is my preference based on the past three four years of using these three VPNs now, that doesn't mean that Nord is a bad VPN. In fact, Nord is the best well-rounded VPN that offers a whole bunch of bonus features for a very reasonable price. So bonus features like threat protection, which acts like a little bit of a mini antivirus as well as an ad and malware blocker. You have MeshNet, which is basically safe remote access over the encrypted network of Nord VPN. So you'll be able to share files safely with people if you're choosing over the safe network here of NordVPN. This is the cool thing about MeshNet. So it just makes remote access and data transfer very easy. And you have Dark Web Monitor, which will keep an eye out for leaked data that's linked to your personal information. You have over 6,000 servers in 61 countries. So that's quite a few less countries than ExpressVPN. Uh, but you do have more servers if that's worth something to you. For
for most people, it's not really going to make a difference. I mean, once server numbers go past a thousand or two, it doesn't really matter that much anymore. That's plenty for everybody. Now, finally, if you're looking for the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing any of the premium features that you get with more expensive VPNs like Express or Nord, and you just want something that works really well, and you'll be able to share it around with as many friends and family members as you would like, Surfshark is definitely a great choice because it will allow for unlimited simultaneous connections, unlike NordVPN's six device limit and ExpressVPN's eight device limit. So if you need more than six or eight devices, then you can definitely go with Surfshark, or you can purchase another subscription with Express or Nord if you need more. So that is basically it for this video. Again, it's as simple as connecting and disconnecting from a location and successful commercial VPNs like these three have made it super easy to use VPNs overall. So you can just, let's say, zoom in on the NordVPN map, pick a server and it will connect to it in just a few seconds. And you can go ahead and refresh on any IP finder of your choice. And it'll basically tell you whether or not you are connected to the right server. In this case, we are because we're using reliable VPNs. So otherwise, I would never really recommend those. So if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below. And speaking of cost, I did speak with ExpressVPN out of curiosity. And they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending way more on the monthly plan than they would have with the yearly plan because it seems like people don't think they're gonna need a vpn for more than a month but they do end up using it for more than a month so they just keep renewing using the monthly plan in this case i would just recommend going with a 12 month plan and using the discount below it'll give you three months for free and in case you change your mind you can just get yourself the refund using the 30 day money back guarantee but on the other hand if you feel like yeah you are gonna use the vpn for um, just a month, then you can just go ahead and get that refund before the 30th day. And that's basically it. And for reviews, you'll find full reviews down below. If you want to learn a little bit more about the privacy policies, speeds, streaming and torrenting capabilities, as well as security features, you'll find the reviews down below. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.